Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I want to talk to you about Black Ops 4 versus Battlefield 5 and all of the other fall games this year. It's been a little bit since I played Black Ops 3 other than that just little smidge you've seen on stream. So I got on to play and I ended up getting matched against a very sweaty squad. There weren't that many other lobbies available and I think I lost a couple games in a row before I managed to pull out a win on this one. But you're going to get to see me try super hard and struggle. But I probably should have asked myself who plays Black Ops 3 at 3 a.m. on a Sunday night and the answer is me and people that never left this game so black ops 3 is an incredibly hype game we're expecting black ops 4 to be just as incredibly hyped and we got a name reveal early this year we got a teaser trailer early the community event is apparently coming much earlier than average and it's going to get released a month earlier than average coincidentally about two weeks earlier than ea's typical window for battlefield or titanfall or whatever it else that is that they're working on and a lot of people have been guessing why we're releasing this game early and the number one is competition from EA and there's some other people saying well you know World War II is that bad and Infinite Warfare is bad so they just have to like crank this out early and get some microtransactions and then there's some super positive people that are like well it's Treyarch the game's probably already done it's being polished and they can just go ahead and launch it early and get extra revenue I'm a little bit more on that train but I think that the honest answer is a very simple one and that's tons of competition Call of Duty as of right now is in a weakened state at the moment especially when it comes to perceptually being weak, uh, like on YouTube, thanks to Fortnite. Sales are actually pretty good. Activision's making good money. I don't doubt that microtransactions are making money. But perceptually, COD's taken a big L on YouTube, thanks to Fortnite and other free-to-play games. And kind of like during the Infinite Warfare anti-trailer hype, EA, Ubisoft, and all of these other companies smell blood in the water, and they see it as a prime time to take a shot at Call of Duty and take down the biggest kid at the playground. If you look at EA's fall, lineup battlefield 5 is rumored to be world war ii themed which it's a little surprising they didn't launch that into call of duty world war ii to compete with it but hey i'm not ea that's fine they're bringing back the classes but they're making them a little bit more team oriented and a little bit less sort of solo yolo vehicles of course are coming back they're saying they're bringing back a lot more attachments and getting rid of the weapon variants which i think would be a good thing all of this comes from a leak mind you none of it's actually a legitimate source or fact there's rumors that the behemoths are coming back and the most interesting thing to me in this leak is it said that it's going to get rid of a lot of the random weapon spread and random weapon bloom that was in Battlefield 1 and pretty much all Battlefield games in order to make your gunfights feel more rewarding and thank god because go actually stream Battlefield 1 a few days ago and that's one of the few things that annoyed me a ton is that the bloom on the weapons would cause my bullets to go not where I'm aiming even when I aim down sights so I just hip fired a lot it kind of drove me crazy and Battlefield 1 was a super successful game at least initially the player base felt off for a bit but it was really hype and it was doing better than infinite warfare for a while it's rumored that titanfall 3 could be coming this fall now that's not even remotely conf confirmed but that is what the rumor is titanfall 1 and 2 were great games with terrible release windows titanfall 1 had to be released exclusive to xbox one when xbox one had no sales and titanfall 2 got released into a whole slew of other shooters at a very very rough time with very limited marketing and I think that if Titanfall 3 had the same quality as Titanfall 1 and 2 and was launched on both platforms in a good window with good marketing, it could be a killer game. And moving along, there's Anthem, which is a little bit more of a Destiny competitor. It's sort of like Destiny with Iron Man, with armor, but it's still a shooting game. It still carries over into that same genre. It still appeals to casual gamers and shooter gamers. And it's it's definitely going to be a Call of Duty competitor, and that's going to be coming out in the fall. That's just from EA. There's a ton of other companies launching competition as well. You've got Red Dead Redemption 2 which is going to be a massive game. There's a lot of people I know that love, uh, you know, GTA and stuff, but they like Red Dead a lot better. And Red Dead Redemption 2, I think, is going to be one of the biggest sellers of the year. I think it's almost certainly going to beat out Black Ops 4 in total. That type of game just does, because they only launch one every, like, I don't know, seven or eight years or whatever. But Red Dead in and of itself is going to be a juggernaut to take down. Looking at the rest of 2018, you've got some games that don't super directly compete with Black Ops 4, but are kind of in the same boat and that people are definitely hyped about. You've got The Last of Us 2, going to be a massive game, going to be super fun to play. You've got Hideo Kojima's Death Stranding, which is his big, super big budget project that he has taken on after being fired from Konami. Kind of a shame his most latest Silent Hill didn't pan out. Kingdom Hearts 3, I wouldn't say 
say really competes with COD, probably not a lot of demographic overlap, but the game has a surprising amount of hype to it. My brother even bought the Kingdom Hearts 2.5 and has just been playing it to get himself hyped up for the story and get into it. It's got a big cult following. Cyberpunk 2077 from CD Projekt Red, the same people that made The Witchers coming out. And while normally I wouldn't say that type of game competes with Call of Duty, given that this one's going to be a very futuristic, gun-heavy uh, shooting type game, that's going to be more competition for Call of Duty. Ubisoft still has Rainbow Six Siege going on very strong. It's growing over time. It's not shrinking. PUBG is still growing. A PlayStation 4 rollout, losing that Xbox One exclusivity would take some people away from Call of Duty. Or just releasing either of the two maps that they recently teased this fall would take people away from other games. And then you hit the big boy at the end of the list. Fortnite. Holy crap, has this game ever taken over Call of Duty's place on YouTube, which is shocking to me in a way because I kind of thought that Overwatch would do that, which is another Activision product. I thought that when Overwatch came out, people would really gravitate toward that because it was pretty well made for console. It was extremely well made for PC. It's very cheap to get into, sort of easy access game, but the player base seemed to hate it because it's cartoony. It's not realistic. I don't want to play an anime game and it's too bright and colorful and punchy and I'm like oh, okay I just kind of died there's almost no overlap between Call of Duty and Overwatch so then PUBG comes out and I thought okay there might be some overlap between PUBG and COD players not eh, not as much as you would think and then Fortnite comes out and I look at this and I think to myself Call of Duty players are gonna hate this game it's so cartoony and so goofy and so colorful and so like childish they loved it. All, all the viewership on, on, on uh, YouTube has just gone straight into Fortnite. But they're even launching a mobile game soon that is apparently is the same as the full game and has crossplay, which is going to be insane. I want to see mobile gamers compete with PC gamers. That's going to be interesting. But the thing about Fortnite is this game is still early access and it's still got an insane amount of hype. Imagine what happens if this fall Fortnite launches a new map or they finally roll out to version 1.0 and they're not early access anymore. They have some big event that could steal a whole ton of users from a whole ton of other games. So yeah, fall 2018 is going to be awesome for gaming. I'm looking forward to just about every single game on this list, except I personally probably won't play Kingdom Hearts 3 because I'm not into that series, but everything else looks awesome to me. And it's going to be really, really hard for Call of Duty to compete with all of this, even with Treyarch bringing out the big guns with Black Ops 4, which I'm sure is going to be a great game. Treyarch always does a good job with their Call of Duty games. So any other year where there weren't as many big games, if all they had to do was take down Battlefield, or if all they had to do was hold up to GTA or Red Dead or something like that, I would say they'd probably stick with the same marketing strategy. But this year... With every other big shooter on the planet, either going free to play, $15, early access, easy to get into, or four or five new big shooters and similar overlapping genres all rolling out in 2018, Call of Duty has to do something marketing-wise. They have to do something different. And I think the simplest idea they, they came up with is that if they launch in November, after all of these other awesome games come out, then consumers probably won't have enough money left over for Call of Duty. Because people are short-sighted, they're a little bit picky, they're finicky, and this is not, maybe not you, but just in big numbers, people aren't going to wait two, three, four weeks for the game they really want. They might settle for the $60, $80 now, and they might not have it later. And with all this stuff coming out, Call of Duty wants to be the now game. They want to be the earliest one out to get the most money and kind of squeeze out the competition as much as possible. If I were running the marketing campaign, I'd probably do the same thing. On a totally different note, though, how long can Call of Duty maintain dominance in an era of early access and free-to-play games? Every time a game like Fortnite, Minecraft, PUBG, which was only $30, or Rainbow Six, which is like $15, the game like that comes out, and it has to compete with Call of Duty $60 plus DLC plus microtransaction price tag, that sort of brand dominance gets harder and harder to hold on to in favor of something that is literally free, like Fortnite. The times are changing in favor of free monetization games, like League of Legends or uh, Iron Sight or any of these kind of games that are out right now at least on the youtube side of things there's a lot of viewership there there's a lot of hype there there's a lot of player base there however i'm not as confident that the money is there i'd actually like to make a full video expanding on this idea but the short version is if call of duty sells 20 million games that's 20 million times 60 dollars plus some dlc plus some microtransactions and other things if let's say fortnite has 20 million active players 
all of those people are, are playing for free unless they bought a battle pass, which is optional, or unless they bought microtransactions, which is optional. So a great number of those players are ultimately going to buy absolutely nothing, and they're going to cost the company money and bandwidth for uploading the game and maintenance and, you know, space on the servers and stuff. When you do business as a company like that, like Riot Games does with League of Legends, you look at customers on an average value, and what you'll find on free-to-play games is that the average value of the customers is somewhere two, three, four, five dollars and not nearly as much as that $60 Call of Duty. So even if sales go down a bit, even if the YouTube hype isn't there, I would wager that $60 money train is going to continue for a long, long time. Guys, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.